Right, morning. This morning you joined me back at Hawcroft Fishery on Bridgepool. Now I've gone for Peg 24 outer. Today I'm going to be fishing a method feeder across just to that point on Bridge Inner. I don't know what peg it is, but just on corner over there. I'm going to chuck a method feeder across. Might even have one down middle. Um, and I might even set up a pole line for that edge as well, because on here there is so many fish in edge throughout the day, even this morning. The next peg is just absolutely alive with fish. So, I'm going to get set up, fishery pellets today, so not really much I can do in regards to using my own, but what I can do is, I can give myself an edge with fishery pellets just by adding a few little extras in. So, I'll get set up, and then what I'll do is, I'll show you my bait, and then I'll go through my rig set up and probably a pole. I'm not sure yet, but I think it might just be a method session, but I really do want to fish pole that edge. Right. Get set up. Right, I know you've all seen this a million and one times, um, but every time I do it, it's worth just running through it again for anyone that's just stumbling across this video for the first time. Uh, but fishery pellets. So wherever you go, if you can't use your own micros, fishery pellets. Normally, quid a bag, couple of quid a bag, and preparing them exactly the same. So these are coppins, there's threatens and coppins available here at Allcroft. These are coppins pellets. So you want to get a pellet wetter. Probably going to use all them today. So, empty it bag into a pellet wetter. All you want to do is just zip it up and then get a tub, bait tub, just fill it with water. And all you want to do is get your pellets into your pellet wetter like that. Just make sure they're all submerged and that way they'll be none taking on more water than rest. All you want to do is you want to get it probably. I normally say about 20 30 seconds. 30 seconds are pretty much done. Uh, if you're fishing on a nice cool day where it's a bit moist in air, if you really soak them through, that's it. You're pretty much stuck with them for the entire day. But today it's really bright, it's going to be 16 degrees today, so it means that I can do them for about 20 seconds. And then I know that when I take them out and put them on my side tray, I've not got a too damper in mix. Um, that it needs to lose any moisture and I can add moisture to it if I need to. So make sure they're all nice and covered in there. Again, just lake water, you can use your own if you want, just normal bottled water. And after 20 seconds, you just want to pull out the bag or pellet strain or wet or whatever, shake off the excess water like that. You don't have to stand here all day shaking it, it's just get majority of that water off like that and then if you've got a side tray that's vented like a Preston Ventolite side tray for example you can chuck it on your side tray and water can still drip out the bottom through your side tray and it can get some air to it as well if not you can just chuck them down up peg on your decking um, and just let them dry out they will be soaking up what's left of that moisture and dripping off any excess that they don't need while they get set up your water don't just tip it away save that either behind your box or if you're going to be fishing ground bait use that for your mix because now you've got lake water that's pretty much 20 percent flavored from your pellets so never chuck it away always save it right so i'll chuck these behind my box i'll get set up and i'll show you what i do with these after right so i know i've shown you this a few times before but ics bomb straight onto your stem the idea is to clip up in front of that peg over there just on the corner, there's bridge in it. So I don't want to be looking at punching it out as hard as I can. I just want to, if anything, gradually work my way up to it. But on this first one, kind of just get it enough so I know it's going out that way. So line it up, little punch, stop. Nowhere near. So now I can reel that back in. And then this time, I know to go a bit harder. See, so now I'm three quarters across. I just want to make sure that I'm not gearing it my all to start with. The last thing I want is to get snagged up over there straight away. So now I know how much to gear it. Now, what I can do is, I can edge 
off that clip up and now I've clipped up I can go a little bit further and just keep clipping up to it as I go out again it look not it but it's a fair old chuck with a short rod over there so that is about I'm guessing about 12 foot off that peg so I'm going to come off just edge towards it a little bit more by taking some line off it clip like that bring him back in again it might seem a pain but it's better to do this and get it completely wrong to start with so now I'm clipped up I'll see where this one lands me there so I am pretty much about two feet off that peg over there so as long as I make sure I come back on break on cast and a break I'll be just in front of that peg it looks it looks tight up to it but it's always case I'm guessing it's probably about two feet off that peg so in essence that's my margin swim over there sort of and it means I can fish this rod that track I don't have to worry about any clips being broke off. And then all you do with that is you take your ICS bomber and then put your BMFFSS back on and then your hook length and you're ready to go. But first I'm just going to finish these pellets off and I'll show you what to print them just to get that little bit of an edge when you can only use fishery pellets. Right, so, I've got my side tray. Not going to be a complicated one today. But they're my pellets, so they've soaked off a lot of that water. What I'm going to do is get a nice big bowl like that. EVA bowl. Get all your pellets in. They're absolutely spot on them. Nice and tacky. Now, fishery pellets. You can't really do much more on edge than just add to it. So you've got things like flavourings and dyes, you can pour a bit of them in. And that's absolutely no problem. Again, it's just something different to the everyday feed that they're used to. So put a bit of them in there, a bit of that in there. So you're not so much colour, because the nice washed out colour that these micros give when they're actually ready is pretty much perfect every time. Um, so that's the Brazim yellow in answer. So if anything, it's had a little bit of colour and now they absolutely smell completely different to what they did before. Revolution baits, rainbow crunch. All it is, it's just loads of little tiny multicoloured particles, green, yellow, red. All you want to do is just crack it open like that and just give it a small sprinkling in there. And that is it. Get bitter and mix up like so. And then your left way, your micro mix, which is now flavoured, completely different to what it was before. And it's got all these little flecks of red and green and yellow in there, just to give it that little bit of an edge. Now, what I'd say is when you're adding that, don't just bang off a tub in straight away. Put a little bit in and see what it looks like. And if you think there's just enough in there, just to catch eye and it's not absolutely buried, then you can leave it. If later on you think that that's becoming a bit of an edge, you can then add some more. You, what you don't want is your micro mix absolutely full of different colours. You just want a fleck of colour every now and again within your mix. And that is it. So I've got my water there that I prepared my micros in. That's my flavoured water. I can use that to rinse my fingers in. Chuck on my corn, chuck on something else. I've got a tin of sweet corn there. I might be going down edge on pole later. I've got my pole set up. Um, I've also got some big old 10 mil um, Brazine wafters from Revolution Baits as well. Now 10 mil might seem huge, but it works on here and they do take it. So I've also got some smaller ones which I've cut down and I've got some fishery 6 mil pellets as well. So nice and simple. I'm going to start a font method across. I'm going to feed a margin line up pole afterwards. I'm not going to go down there straight away because it's quite early on in day. It's 
ten past nine in the morning. And uh, even though I don't do a lot of matches, I always try and keep it within match times just so I get a more accurate response. So uh, I'm going to load up my method and get chucked out. So a bit closer for you. That's my pellet mix. You can see them flecks of colour in there nice and easy. So that's my edge there. So I've got them set up. Now I want to get my BMF FSS nice and simple and just chuck on the hook length. So I'm going to go with a size 12 to 019 reflow power. Let's get that stop out there. What do we do with these? Just like a normal connector, like an old Stomfo connector for a pole. You put your hook length over, push your collar over, and that sits back in your feeder like so. Your hook length, make sure it's got your stop on it. And all you want to do is get your hook bait. So this, I'm actually going to go with a 10 mil. Cut it in half like so. Save that off there. Get a bait drill, go through the cap of it like so, I'm going to get a bait needle, I use avid ones because they're absolutely spot on, and then you want to get your hook length, you want to go through the top of your wafter like that, and your band just pulls into it, so you just want to close that gate on that needle and just pull your band into it like that and then as you let go, your band traps it still, like that and then just load it up so you want to put just a bed of micros in there first get your stop push your stop into your recess of your feeder and then you want to bring your hook bait over just put it into your method like that and then just cap it off it's up to you how much you put on it. You don't have to absolutely bury it. I don't, because I think that there's, there's plenty enough pellets on there, especially for that first fish anyway. And there you have it. Get your brassy yellow in answer. Give it a squirt, and that's ready to go out. So I'll chuck this out. I've got my stopwatch. I'll see how long it takes for the first one. Get a few squirts. Perfect. That's fishing spot on. So I am tight to that clip, but restart that. See if anything's moved over across. There we go. That's fish on. Yeah, he's a cracker. Absolute stonking carp. I forgot my sun cream. Even in colder months of year. Oh, he's only just in there. <laughs> oh, God. There we go. Lovely big common carp. There we go. Probably about ten pound of carp in. Method feeder, Robin Red pellet, Revolution baits, Brazim yellow spray over top. That is exactly what we're after. So I'm going to chuck him back, and I'm going to get back in for some more. All right. That's 10 minutes on that. So bring it over here out of weight. So what I'm going to do is reel this all the way in and then hook it up. And then before I get my rig, 
a couple of pieces of corn over the top like that. Get the rig. Nice flat square piece of corn I'm after. Not one of them horrible long things. And then let's chuck my number four on. And then I'm gonna go up and over it like that and drop it straight in and let it lay onto that bank under water on that shelf. See if we can get a quick fish out at margin. There we go. That's a skimmer. It'll do though. Oh, not what I'm after, but it'll do. Another little bit of flying skimmer. But not bad on corn, I guess. Probably two pound. Straight in lip. So if they're still feeding, that might have been where I pulled that on before. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go straight back down again. Because if they still feed after a disturbance, it might mean carp might hang about as well. Still nothing showing on that right hand swim. So straight back in, lay it in, pole still, get straight down like that. I'm actually resting my pole on my bait tray here on my, on my side tray. There we go. This is where my lack of pole knowledge comes in. There's absolutely no favours for me whatsoever. I'm guessing it's going to be a carp. Not going to bother putting any feed down yet. Don't want this carp to swim straight back into my swim and destroy it. Just gonna hold my pole there like that. If fish starts running, I'll be able to feel it on pole and I'll be able to go back out with some pole. But I don't want to be just taking my top kit straight off. There we go. I'm fishing really light as well. So 11 jaw of slip elastic. Whereas I know that might seem a bit light for some of you regulars on here on bridge, but I'm not a pole angler and uh, if I can just wait that little bit longer on lighter gear waiting for him I will do as opposed to just trying to rag him out on every gear. So that fish is going nowhere yet, I'm still in close quarters so I can just come off with my top kit, a couple more bits of corn, preferably over my swim and get my puller get some tension back on that elastic and then if he starts to run I can give him some elastic back as well. You don't feel a bad fish. I think he's going to be a bit smaller than what I've been having all day with how he's going off. You just tell someone and just feel small. Feels probably like a little four pounder or something. And then big 15s and 20s you just lift into him and you just plod. Get my net ready, just chuck it onto my feeder rest. Yeah, it's probably about four pound him. So he's running, I can feel the tension on the pole and it's coming back now. So if he were to carry on running, he'd just turn my pole into just a big rod and he'd just be pulling it that way as you'd be playing a fish on rod and line. Oh, there we go. In fact, it's definitely bigger than four pound. In fact, it's double that. So back with top kit. Hook right in top lip. And there we go. Nice chunk. Probably about probably about eight pound him. Not a massive fish, but definitely a welcome one. 
on pole it margin just on a single piece of corn. I chuck him back and we'll get another one. Ooh. All right, a couple of pellets. Now this may seem odd. We're going straight back over that swim, simply because ragging a carp out of a swim like that won't normally affect them skimmers if they're there. So I'm just going to go in and have five minutes to see if I can get another fish, skimmer or carp. And if I can't, then it's coming out and I'm going straight back across on that method. Right, so lay it in. Just wait for an indication straight away. So I've already put some feed in after that fish. Got to remember that when you hook a big fish like that and they come out of your swim, all the feed you've put in prior won't be there anymore. Just one, one waft of that tail as it fights off and your feed will just get blown all the way to the side. So always remember, just chuck a few pellets in or a bit of corn. If you're not going to pot in again with a big pot, before you go back over it. Nice sail away bite, and then get some six mils straight back in. And there, Seems about ready. Again, not why it's wrong, but another big fish out at margin on corn. That. Let's get back in and get another one. Chop that back in edge there, just let it slowly drift into that, to that bank on that slope. So in that bite, we're just a quick slam under. That's what I'm looking for with these big carp. We just inhale that up bait, and then as soon as they know there's something wrong, they just they off straight away. And that's where you get that first initial dink on bite, and then it slams straight under afterwards as they start to shoot off. Right, first things first, let's get this back out. 
don't know if you can see that, but an absolutely luminous, huge wafter, which I'm going to stick in my BMFFSS, so I don't have to worry about that being right off the deck. That's going to sit there like that. Massive 10 mil, bright green, flavoured in Brazilian yellow. So I want to push that there like that. There we go. Get a nice press down, not too hard. So I don't mind if I lose that skin as it hits bottom straight away. I know that what's underneath my bait is still going to be appealing for a fish. Alright, get back out there. Right, so let's start watch. Right, now that's back out. There's some down there. Some down there. A little bit of corn. Not too much. So that's what I'm fishing on hook. And down there as well. Beautiful. Again, those 10 mil wafters from Revolution Baits, they look absolutely huge. But you've seen the size that fish have been going in here. So we're a nice big size 10. MCMB. And a nice short hook length. Should be absolutely spot on. It's all trial and error. I have been cutting them down and using them and doing quite well. I think while I've got it there, I'm just going to come off that clip. There we are. A bit more. There we go. Then on that next cast, I'll just be going into that new water again, just a bit further out. Another ten minutes. Bit over. Let's get this in. Get another ten minute chuck out there. So your micros are drying out a bit, so just go a splash of water like that. Put them on, not too much. I'll just give them another turn over. Sort of revives them a little bit, that does. They'll soak in. Ten minutes. Come and chuck that down there. Yes. I'm going to lay it into the side, the marker which is my bait tub here, and just let it lay down onto that top of that shelf there. Go straight over my rig, pull down, let my rig settle on its own. And by laying it in, it will drift into that bank underneath so fish can pull it down. 
again just looking for line bites see if there's any fish still in the swim in the same manner and i'll just there we go just get that right indication up float oh it's a skimmer oh i thought that was going to be a carp what came in there to fuss him so there you go was a nice skimmer probably about two and a half pound him so while he's in just get a couple more bits of corn again i don't want to bury it with corn because corn's my up bait get a few pellets in and you just scored your frame look out not bad him on corn out at margin oh. not camera's head off so I'm not moaning, if anything, they're just keeping my margins swim alive. So I lay that rig straight in, and now I want to be dead still. My rig's just settling now. Floats drop down, hook baits at bottom, and I'm ready. Again, just waiting for that next fish. Those loose offerings I've just chucked in, mine's just follow them down straight away. So if any fish have seen them and just follow them to the bottom, they're already feeding on them, and then my hook bait's just going to land on top of them as well. And if a fish sees it out corner of its eye or it just falls past the feeding fish's face, it could just take it and just snatch it and run. And again, there we go. Nice big carp. You were nearly out of water him. Get some more pole ready just in case. Because he were really early. All the way, all the way out if I need to. We're a nice big fish in. And again, so while I've got him on and I'm playing him out there, let's get some corn down the edge. A few pellets. And just guide him. I've only got 11 metre of pole out. I'm not playing big angry carp on 16 metre when I don't do any pole fishing. And that was my fish, ladies and gentlemen. Just to give you an insight. So again, just going to hold my pole nice and still. My elastic will do what work I need it to. See, while that fish is going absolutely barmy, I've got carp absolutely flying past him as well. I'll get some more pellets. Let's get them down there in that swim. Like that. And that means any more skimmers and carp that are still there, they'll just concentrate on feeding while I concentrate on this one. Head on. So now I'm down to my top kit. So now I'm in sort of close combat with him. And again, get some feed back in your margin. There we go, he's in. That's Andy May at that time. Oh, you're a painter, Gary. Leaving your margin swim, because you've just pulled out a couple of fish and going straight back down on it. If you've got skimmers in your margin swim, I recommend you always, always just go back in because you'll always keep them skimmers there. They won't just rush off. And whilst they're there feeding, carp aren't going to see it as a major threat. But yeah, we were sort of don't know, let's see. Probably about 10, 11, I get him a bit too much. But, nice bonus fish out margin. All right, let's get him back in and get another one.
it might turn itself off then. This is another one anyway, out of edge. nice bit of sweet corn in through the top and then out the side and then simple as just going straight back in here again you can help foul up fish only to a certain point after that you just if, if you get it in it's a bonus you just have to deal with it right so pull straight down i'm nice and still my rig's just settling that hook bait's just falling through now it's probably on bottom it Probably on late bed now. So now I'm, a I'm around all them loose offerings. There's fish there already. I'm just getting an indication now. And all I'm doing is I'm just waiting for that dunk under. And I can lift straight into it. There we go. So, all straight on. There's a good carp. I think he's hooked it mouth. I don't think he's quite understood what's happening yet because he's just wallowing around. So, get some pellets straight over your swim. And he's no doubt going to wake up in a second. Very nice, but not a very big one. Ah, and he's off. And again, you've got to prepare yourself for that as well, because he wasn't foul hooked. He was hooked absolutely fine at mouth. And uh, he's off. So fresh piece of corn on. I've just fed it. See, now this probably would be a bit early because... I'll stop playing that fish and we're straight back in. We're normally at five minutes of play time and then I'll be back in, giving them time to move back over. Just drop that rig in, let it settle. I'm just repeating it the same again. Just waiting for another one. It's normally fish like that that are the decider fish of whether you're going to get any more because hooked nice and quickly and then you're off. He did play a bit funny, 100% confident. I mean, you never can be, but I was very confident he hooked it mouth. He comes straight up and my rig were going straight towards his mouth, so I don't have to play all that. It was foul up to rubbish. So same as before. I'm going to slowly lift my rig out at swim, lay it back over again, put my pole straight down, and let my rig settle. Just in the hope that there's fish down there and they just want to see a moving up bait or a moving loose feed just to take. Another, another drift then, so rig was just drifting off as though a fish was just. Oh, big fish just left my peg. Absolutely slam under bite that as well. And get straight back in regardless. Indications are not flow. Oh. There we go. That one is on. I don't plan on staying much longer, but just out to rabbit. it. 
So again, I know you guys can't see it from there, but really positive bite. Absolutely slammed under. Just now I'm expecting it. Bit of sweet corn over there as well. Wants to really be on a button there, that's it. Alright, so he's not venturing out too far, so I can get some of my elastic back. I'm going to pull it. And there we are, nice mirror. See how easy it is? And I don't even do any pole fishing. He has got a branch room. Fishing under a tree. Mine's even helping come in a bit easier to be fair. Not a big fish. There we go. Minus the branch. Another nice little mirror. Probably say he's about six and a half pound, probably seven pound, not a massive fish. But corn over pellet, revolution baits, brazim, yellow and answer. Uh, I've had a few fish on revolution baits, wafters across as well and on pellets. Um, with some rainbow crushing micros and just six, six mil fishery pellets. And that's what you can do when you're limited to fishery pellets. And you just want to have that little bit of an edge. You can have your Brazim Yellow in and Supreme or any other dye from Revolution Baits. Your Rainbow Crush, which just gives it that little extra fleck of colour on your method feeder or that edge. And you're presented with fish like that. So thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. And I'll see you what next one.